Hello everybody, Bubbles S here and welcome back to Hearts of Iron 4. In today's video we're going to be playing as Grease, attempting to answer the question of what's the point of Monarchist Grease. So let's get started. First things first, research slot. Civilian trains and 36 equipment. From here it's standard electronics, industry and so on. For our civs we're just going to be building mills for now. For actual mills and dockyards we're going to queue up support equipment and just build convoys. For the army, we're going to gather it up and place it on a fallback line. I'd love to create an intelligence agency, but we don't have enough sis for that. So instead, let's do our focus. Devaluing the drachma. And that is pretty much all of our prep out of the way. So all that's left to do now is to go up to speed 5 and begin. This is different from me. I'm not actually going to place the king under house arrest for once. And who could have seen this one coming? The monarchist won the election. And next up, utilize our strengths. And there goes Venicelios. At least it gets rid of some of our stability problems. Although, look at that. I think I've only seen more red stability in Kaiserreich. And now, foreign subsidised factories. So that's also improved relations with the UK, France, Germany, and the USSR. It's important that we do this now, because our next focus is, like, the right to rule and petition the British for aid will make them hate us, so they won't give us factories. So we have to do it now, if we want to get the bonuses. Look at that. We cannot really afford this, but we can probably get away with it. It's not like when we do it with Venicelios, where we can get, like, 0.05 political power a day. Ah, finally, we can create an intelligence agency. It looks like enough countries are buying our resources. Yep. Good. There we go, from 15 factories to 23. Definitely worth rushing that. Anyway, now it's finally time to go down the king's government. Oh, and to stop improving relations, because I want my political power back. One extra into each, I think, for now, and we'll buy the steel from Britain. I've been repaying Greece's debt to Britain this whole time, because we have to pay it. We don't have to pay the debt to France or Italy, though, because that will just be thrown out later. And now, the right to rule. I don't know why doing this causes us to abandon our debts with Italy and France. This just comes out of absolutely nowhere. Well, here he is. George II has dissolved the Hellenic Parliament. The divisive absolute monarch has taken command. And now civil war is inevitable. So next up, the obvious next step, expand our more luxury commodities. The civil war will come in 45 days. And there is one simple way for us to deal with this. There goes the army. The Civil War tag will get more troops than we can, so it's just much easier to disband all of our units. There we go, we lose 75 political power from that. Right, now we'll just hold focus until the Civil War starts. Just a bit of speculation, I wonder if at some point there was almost like a state mini-game where you could decide which states you could control, because the states you get are always decided for you. Just something, if Paradox somehow watches this, this could make the Greek Civil War a lot more interesting if we could have control of which states we have, because it could make it a lot more dynamic. The Civil War has begun. Right, immediately we're going to petition the British for aid, which for some reason gets rid of the Schacht plan. That's another one I have no idea why it is, but it is. Which means if you want to do something like to the Shack plan, you can't really do this immediately, you're going to have to spend almost a year going down to it. Anyway, to win a civil war like this, simple strategy, let's train up as many cavalry as we can. Five, alright, we'll have one deploy here, but the rest will be for Alexandropolis. Also going to grab myself a little bit of war propaganda, the extra war support will be pretty useful for us. And yes, we must rally to the king. Because monarchy is always in fashion, hoi for. So one unit for the Peloponnese. And the rest, here. Uh, let's crack down on the Republicans next. We'll wait 24 hours to get to Org. And there we go. And yep, Britain refuses to aid us. The main problem with this is actually this. It takes away 25 of our political power. Now, if you don't know, what this actually does depends on Britain's response. They can give us weapons, support equipment, political power. This thing isn't really worth it, though, because of how mild it is. It's like a thousand guns, like a few hundred bits of support equipment. Germany can help you if they've gone on the line, but... Considering it gets rid of the Schacht plan, this is not good. You know, I'm not afraid to say it. This is not worth it. But anyway, for the Civil War, it's a fairly standard Civil War. 
The other Grease will put out some units, but they're usually here. What do you know? I marked it perfectly, and now we can just walk right into Alexandropolis. And there we go, we're done. And since it's not 1937, we also get the achievement Hellenic Chivalry. Very good. And we managed to get, I'd say, uh, four or five extra war support, which, considering that allows us to go up to partial mob, I'm on board with that. Anyway, let's reform this army. We can't have it all be cavalry. Wait, how many infantry can we afford? Seven right now. Okay, max priority, deploy, and we'll have them as soon as we can. Oh, this is what's left of our military high command. Okay, I guess we'll go for the artillery expert. And may as well also do the defense guy. At least that's one benefit of having George. He gives some of our advisors a little cheaper. The Civil War is also why I built the mills in Attica. If we were building them in, like, Thrace, we would have lost the construction on them. Anyway, next up, use the military. Three extra mills? Very good, considering our deficit is 6,000. And this is what's left of our advisors. The only one that's probably worth it now is ones like Metaxas and the Elusive Gentleman. Hey, 1.37 political power a day. Greece does have an unusual benefit that you may not be aware of. Greece starts on Grand Battle Plan as their doctrine, which gives them the spirit of the Academy Theatre training, which is unbelievably good. Especially if you want to actually go for some new generals. Look, we only have three of them anyway. So may as well try and get some more brilliant strategists or inflexible strategists. We're going to now do prepare against the Mediterranean threat. And there we go, 12 divisions. I'm going to try and see if we can get a Mountaineer out. Takes up all of our manpower, but we should be able to afford one as more men get mobilised. And there we go, some special forces. And probably the only one we'll be able to afford. But hey, 13 divisions. And now we get a little bit of action with securing the Bulgarian menace. Probably best to do this now before any guarantees come out. So let's park on the Bulgarian border. I've always wondered if you get more traits quickly if you don't have a field marshal order. So I'm just going to have the general for a moment to see if he can get things like infantry leader a little quicker. I don't know, this could be an interesting experiment at least. And now that I've said that, someone will almost certainly have the correct answer in the comments. That's just how this works. I'm going to have to take another stability hit because I'm going to commandeer some civilian trains as we have none. Anyway, let's get them. Bulgaria is fairly weak right now, they have no manpower and only 13 divisions, so it's a fairly even fight. For us, we're going to expand the tobacco industry and mobilise the economy. I currently want to go also to extend the conscription, but we do not have enough war support for that. Luckily, war propaganda should reappear in a second. But to defeat Bulgaria, the main thing we're going to have to do is encircle and destroy. Oh, hey, there's the war propaganda. Oh, you want to do a pin? Well, you know what we say to pins, you just say no. The AI wants to pin? Well, I don't care, I'll just walk away. And there we go, we've cut Sophia off. Not really as crippling as it used to be before the supply changes, but that's still inherently useful for us. Good, 35 XP, pro officer court. Good, we're about to get in a circle of Podliv. Not many units, but some. And we can begin to march on Varna and Burgas. We probably encircle it. Oh god, that's a big potential encirclement there. Also just smash into Sophia. Oh, ironic. I want 20% war support, but I don't have it. So, uh, University of Athens, I, I guess. That's all we can do. Yeah, just managed to last stand that unit to get this encirclement unbroken. So we need at least three weeks more to get what we need in terms of war support. Come on, extensive, there we go. Now all that I've done is made it really, really annoying to capitulate Bulgaria, because they're kind of entrenched in their victory points. Well, one more victory point and that should do, so let's focus on this one, Stara. And there's the end of them. Just gonna puppet them, I think. There we go. I think my theory was sort of right in traits, but we didn't get any in the end, so... Did it really matter? Who knows. But in the end, we did manage to defeat Bulgaria, which was, I'd say, alright. We got pretty much everything I wanted out of that. Extensive, loads of extra war support. That's worked in our favour fairly well. At least now we can actually begin to build somewhat of an army with all this extra manpower, including Bulgaria's. Wait, what? 
Bulgaria has no templates. Alright, let's check the decommissioned ones. Oh, I think I know. Yep, Bulgaria still has army restrictions, so... We can't even use Bulgaria's manpower. I thought that was meant to go when Bulgaria goes to war, or something, but whatever. So maybe it is better to annex Bulgaria and build compliance. I'll leave that up to you. Anyway, let's finally do our traditional allies in the Aegean. Let's join the allies. Britain kind of dislikes us because of us raising more attention, but they still kind of like us. And I'm even improving relations to try and get them back up. And there we go. What does Britain say? They refused us last time. Now that's what I want to see. We're in the allies. Now for our next step, we're going to try and achieve Enosis with Cyprus. There are three ways this can go. One, Britain says no. Two, you get Cyprus as a puppet, but you will have cores on them. And three, you get full Enosis and you get Cyprus. I believe you can save scum this. I mean, just getting 5% of 300,000 will definitely be a juicy addition to our manpower pool. And what does Britain say with Enosis? They accept a partial Enosis. We are going to get Cyprus as our puppet. And by puppet, they actually mean Dominion. So if you don't know what that means, we're going to have to send them down to a colony, puppet, integrated puppet, and then we annex them. That's kind of annoying. Admittedly, that sounds like something like Britain would actually do, so you know what, it's kind of fitting. But it's weird that they're the Dominion of Cyprus with the British flag. Surely it should be uh, something else. I don't know, the Autonomous Region of Cyprus? Something. <laughs> Didn't really have the British colour and British flag and everything. I have actually managed to annex Cyprus and I can tell you it took me years to do it. In fact, I can show you that save right now. Here you go. In this save, I did manage to get it. But 300,000 manpower to invest so much into them wasn't really worth it. You lose out on so much for them choosing to do the partial enosis. It'd almost be better if they said no. And alright, I think I'm going to be calling this here. Because, believe it or not, that is everything. That's absolutely everything that comes with the monarch history. Right to rule and petition the British for aid is technically one of the only few unique focuses to them. Sure, you do have realigned ourselves with the central powers and the wayward ally, but we'd have to turn off historical for that, and that is too inconsistent for my liking when it comes to video making. So, that is everything when it comes to the monarch history. And that is really, really underwhelming. Literally, the only other thing we could do is do the Macedonian Empire. And we're not doing the Macedonian Empire. We have to control all of this to do it. That's just not going to happen, I'm afraid. The amount of Order 66s you'd have to pull off and so many other things to do it is just not worth it. But here's the thing. I actually like parts of Greece's focus tree. I really like the military and economic trees. I think they're really good, but Greece has a bad political tree. No, seriously, I do not like Greece's political tree. I think it needs to be done again. So, like, Monarchist, you get nothing. Oh, you get a notice from Cyprus, you can do that with Metaxas. In fact, Metaxas's existence in this tree means you should really never go Monarchist. Because look at all of these extra bonuses you get with Metaxas instead. The thing that's always annoyed me with this tree, though, is why is Enosis with Cyprus locked to the non-aligned tree? If Greece can somehow convince the Allies to go to war with Turkey, they sure as hell can convince the Allies to give over Cyprus. Why is it only here? So, just to look in the Communist tree, this is probably the most in-depth one here, and it's a bit meh. So, usually I'd say let me know what you could do to improve the Monarchist tree, but... I'm going to open this question to be a bit more general. If you have any ideas on how to improve the Greek political tree, do comment them below, because, as always, there's, also, there's always a lot of potential here that Paradox just isn't tapping. But alright, that's enough rambling on Enosis and all things with the Greek tree. Let's go back to the, our actual save from this run. So if I was going to continue this, it'd probably be exactly that save that you just saw. I'd work on Annex in Cyprus, and then I'd just have a very fun time defending against... Italy. That game that you just saw was actually quite an alright one. You'll have a fun defensive game ahead of you, but that's pretty much it. You will probably have a tiny bit more fun on non-historical, but 
all in all, I'm just going to have to leave it with this. What's the point of Monarchist Greece? There is no point. Go with Metaxas. He's much better. Which is a weird thing to say, but there's nothing here. So, until next time, everybody, this has been me, Bubble Zest, playing as Monarchist Greece. I thank you for watching. I do hope you've enjoyed it. Forgive me if I went a bit overboard in how much I showed I despise this tree. I don't hate it per se, I more just wish it was better. If you know what I mean by that, you're like, I really want this to be good, but I just can't say it is. But oh well. Until we meet again, everybody. Good. Bye.